Welcome to DNSQL. My name is Dinesh Priyankara, Data Platform MVP and Business Intelligence Architect. With this video, I'm going to talk about always encrypted feature, which was introduced in SQL Server 2016. Let me show you the things I have planned for this video. I'll be talking about what is always encrypted and how it works. Then I'll be showing the way of configuring always encrypted using SQL Server Management Studio. I have one more demonstration that shows the way of accessing encrypted data or passing encrypted data using a .NET application. Okay, what is always encrypted? It's a feature that supports us for protecting or securing sensitive data. We have been using various techniques for securing our data, but some of the techniques we have used do not secure our data 100%. For an example, if I have used a symmetric key for encrypting my data, database administrator can decrypt my data if he has access to my key. But with always encrypted feature, it doesn't happen like that because encryption happens at the client side and SQL Server receives a cipher text, not a plain text. And SQL Server does not hold all keys related to encryption. That's make sure that no one but the person who encrypted can access data and decrypt encrypted data. Okay, let's see some of the things related to always encrypted. So as I explained, this was introduced with SQL Server 2016. Initially, it was available only with Enterprise Edition, but after 2016 Service Pack, it is available with all other editions. There are two types of keys used for always encrypted. One is called Column Master Key, other one is called Column Encryption Key. Column Encryption Key is used for protecting or securing or encrypting our data. Column Master Key is used for encrypting Column Encryption Key. So, which means if somebody has the Column Master Key, that person can encrypt and decrypt data. There are two types of encryptions available with always encrypted. One is called deterministic, other one is called randomized. Deterministic always produces the same ciphertext for same plain text, but random, randomized generates a different type of ciphertext for same plain text. How, how do you decide whether you have to set either deterministic or randomized for your columns? For example, if you want to make sure that column can be used for searching, column can be used for grouping, then use the technique or the type like deterministic. If you do not use your column for grouping, searching, then it is always better to use randomize. Okay, let's see how it works. Assume that uh, you have a data set like this. So this is one of the values stored in, in one of your tables. I want to make sure this value is getting encrypted. No one can read it. So I'm going to use always encrypted, which means this value will be encrypted using column encryption key. So I, I can name my column encryption key as my CEK01 and then I can get hello world encrypted using that key. So now no one can read it. But if somebody has access to my column encryption key which is my CEK01 then they can decrypt it. So I'm going to protect my CEK01 using column master key. So once I apply column master key, my column encryption key is protected. But we need to make sure that no one has access to CMK or the column master key. So I need to make sure that column master key is not exist in my SQL database. That has to be taken out. So generally we store it in the client machine. For example, we can store it in the certificate store or we can simply store it in Azure Key Vault. Uh, you can use third-party storage provider too. So this makes sure that column store master key is not available with the SQL Server. It is available only with the client. But we'll be keeping column encryption key inside the SQL Server database. So this is how it works. Let's see how encryption and decryption works. So I have a database and I have my table which is called DBO message. This has two column message code and message and I want to make sure both message code and message columns are encrypted using always encrypted. But I want to make sure that I can make searches on message code. In that case, I have to use deterministic encryption type for message code and randomize for message. So once always encrypted is applied, this is how I'm going to see data. Okay, I have a client who has the latest edio.net library and he has the column master key which can be used for encrypting and decrypting my message data. Now, if you want to 
look for a message based on a code like AA56B, this is the statement he will be constructing. You can see a parameter is exist which is called code and that parameter has been used with the where condition. So it's a simple select statement. Now when client passes this statement through ADO.NET, it, it knows that a client is accessing a table that has encrypted column. So it's make sure that all the values related to encrypted columns are encrypted. So it goes through ADO.NET library and then this is what SQL Server database receives. As you see, SQL Server does not see a value like AA56B. Instead, SQL Server will see a ciphertext. Since ciphertext can be matched against message code, SQL Server can find the related message. But again, SQL Server does not know the, the real value of the message. So SQL Server will just send the encrypted message to client. And when client receives the message, since it knows SMK, it can be decrypted without any issue. So finally, client sees the, the plain text related to the message code AA56P. This is how it works. It's a time for demonstration. So let me show you how we can configure always encrypted on a simple table and then how we can access it using a .NET application. Okay, I'm going to use one of my databases created in Azure SQL Server. You can see I have connected to uh, one of my Azure SQL Server, which is called in SQL Server, and I have a database called Sales. It has no table, so I'm going to create a table. So let me paste the code. As you see, I'm creating a table called Message that has three columns. One thing you have to notice is the collate I have used. This collate is required for always encrypted. You need to make sure you use Latin General uh, BIN2 uh, if you want to apply always encrypted on your table. So let me create the table. Done. And I'm going to insert a record. Remember, we have not enabled always encrypted yet. Now, if I want to see the records I entered, I can say select all from dba dot message. Okay, I see the value. Now, let's see how we can make sure that message code and message columns are encrypted using always encrypted. Let me refresh my table node. You can see the table. I can right click on the table and uh, select this encryption column to start the wizard for making this table as always encrypted type of table. But before that, let me show you two more nodes. If I expand security node, I can see a node called always encrypted keys. There are two nodes under always encrypted keys, one for column master key and column encryption keys. But at the moment, we don't have any column master keys or encryption keys. So let me start the wizard by right clicking on the message and selecting encrypt columns. So wizard starts with the usual introduction type of page. I can click on next and it shows me all the columns available with my table. All I want is message code and message columns. So the message code has to be encrypted using deterministic and message has to be encrypted using randomized. You can see it generates an encryption key called CEK Auto 1. So let's accept the default and click on next. Next is for configuring the master key. Since we don't have any master key created in this instance, I don't see any item in the list. And the next section is for uh, selecting the, the place where I'm going to store my master key. So I'm going to store the master key in my client machine, in my machine. So the first option is Windows Certificate Store. And the last one, select master key source. So I can simply select it as current user. So this makes sure that master key is generated and stored in my certificate store. Let me click on next and if I want to get this script saved for uh, running it again, I can select the first option, but in this case, I don't want. So let me continue with the second option, which is proceed and finish now. I can click on next and analyze the summary and I can click on finish to see uh, how it goes. Okay, wizard has been successfully completed. I can see wizard has created column master key and column encryption key. 
and I can execute my select statement against message table and see whether data is now encrypted. As you see, message code and message columns are encrypted. Now, I know that the certificate related to column master key is stored in my machine, so I should be able to read message code and message. So if I want to execute a select statement just like the way I have executed using Management Studio, yet I have to see, I, I want to see the message code and message, I need to add a special setting to my uh, connection string. So this is how you do it. Let me open a new query window. And let me get the properties of my connection. So I can go for options and then go for the last step which is called additional connection parameter and put a statement like this which is column encryption setting is enabled. Let me click on connect, select the sales database and let me type the select statement for my message table. Now I can see data. So this is how it works. If you want to see encrypted data uh, or when you execute statement using Management Studio, make sure you have added that additional uh, connection string parameter. Okay, uh, let's see how we can access data using .NET application and how we can pass data using .NET application. For getting data and for inserting data, I'm going to have two stored procedures against sales table, sales database. Let me show you the stored procedure I have already written. So it's the first one is called add message, second one is called get message. So I'm simply passing message code and message to add message and then using a simple insert statement I insert the record and with the get message stored procedure I'm accepting the message code and returning the message using an output parameter. Let me execute both. I have added both stored procedures. Now let's have a look on the .NET application I have written. So it's a Windows form. Uh, you can see I have one form called Form 1 which has two input boxes, one for the code, one for the uh, message. And I have two buttons, one for submitting a new record and one for getting a message when I pass the code. Let me show you the code I have written for Submit button and the Get button. As you see, I'm creating a connection and then uh, creating a command uh, based on the add message stored procedure and passing code and the message using parameters. So that's how I insert a record. But you need to uh, notice one thing with the connection string. It's a standard connection string with an additional setting. You can see I have added column encryption settings enabled to this connection string just to make sure that it knows that I'm using an always encrypted uh, type of table. So that's my uh, insert button or the submit button code. Let me show you the, the get button one. So same way I have uh, formed the connection string. I have set column encryption settings enabled to my connection string. Then I'm calling get message stored procedure by passing the message code and then I accept the message to message parameter. Then through the message box I'm showing the value of the message. Let's run this and see how it works. Let me click on start. I get the form and I'm going to put a code like ADA56 and the message is a test message. So I can click on submit and this goes to my database in encrypted format. Okay, now if I want to uh, check and see whether I can get the value when I pass the code can simply remove this and click on get by passing ADF56. I'm getting the message so which means this works fine. So let me go back to my database and see whether how this record has been inserted. If I execute my select statement I should see two records. Second record has been inserted using my .NET application. Remember though I see all these values message code and message no one else can see these message codes and messages because they don't have these column master keys with them. I can see it. I can run .NET application in my machine to access this table because the column master key is stored in my certificate store. Okay, hope you learned well about always encrypted. 
With my next video, let me show you the way of copying the certificate to another client, allowing them to access encrypted data. Thanks for watching.